don't reach out to someone who is a YouTuber or a blogger or someone who's like a public figure per se with a lot of connection because they get a lot of referral requests. Your coursework is practically just project after project after project. Every course I get six to ten projects to do and if I uh, fail, like there's a good faith attempt, so if I, fa if I fail a single test in a single project, I'll fail the course and if I fail like two oh. courses, I'll be out of college. So just to, you know, oh. stay in college, you have to do so many projects. That there's two things you need for FANG. One is getting the interview and the other is cracking it. And in my opinion, even though cracking it is hard, getting it is like 10 times harder. Hello everyone. Today we have with us a very special guest that is Anjali and she has done, uh, you know, some amazing gigs in her career till now. So let's hear from her about her experience in the, in the tech journey. Believe me, you'll learn a lot of things from the session. The questions I've prepared will definitely help you uh, in your career ahead. So let's get started with a small introduction from Anjali. Over to you, Anjali. Hi, everyone. My name is Anjali Varamgama. Uh, I'm 22. I graduated from University of Maryland six days ago. Um, I did a bachelor's in computer science, and I had a minor in cybersecurity and technology entrepreneurship. Uh, I was born and raised in Gujarat. I moved to the United States uh, in my second year of college, and I have internship experiences at Fannie Mae, Facebook, and AWS. And I'm going to join Microsoft full time post graduation. Oh, so in about a month. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it's really amazing. So, like, what offers do you have right now in your hand? Um, in my hand, not technically because I said no to the others. But at that time, like I, I had finished my Facebook internship. I had an offer from Amazon, Microsoft. Uh, I had an offer from Salesforce uh, and then a couple others. I also was in touch with the SpaceX recruiter and we were oh. going to go through the process, but I, I signed Microsoft. So I said no. Oh, great, great. So like in India, we have a concept like uh, on campus and off campus placements. Uh, which of your, uh, you know, placements or offers were outside your campus and which were on campus? So in the U.S., there's no such thing as campus placements. So all my offers were off campus. Uh, here, it's more about, one, applying online. And two, there are career fairs. But career fairs are pretty much like open to all in the sense that there are so many conferences with career fairs. You can just walk in. And even if it's a different college, you know, they have their own hackathons. I can just go to their hackathon and then their career fair. But because of COVID, these career fairs are virtual, not really useful. And even before, I think... Uh, I don't think your college really matters or your college campus placement matters in the US because at the end of the day, everyone's applying online and you just have to shoot your shot amongst everyone in the US. Okay, so the, the scene is like you just go to the career page and the, the apply there only. Yeah, that's what I did, yeah. And, and you won't imagine the scenario in India is like we, we don't even, you know, believe in applying to career page because we think the probability of getting shortlisted is near to nil. But you can always increase your chances by applying again and again and applying to different roles. And oh. then just the thing is, if you once you get a role, like once you get a recruiter email, that stays with you. So, for example, yeah. getting a full time Microsoft interview was so much easier for me because last year I got an internship offer from Microsoft. And even though I turned it down, I had the recruiter email. So I, I was in touch with yeah. her and I just got her an email saying, hey, I'm going to graduate. Uh, do you want to consider hiring me for full time? <laughs> and she's like, Yeah, go through the interview rounds. So even though like, oh. like it's chances are negligible, if you just apply and if you just get it once, like it's in your pocket. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So how are you actually prepared for, you know, FANG interviews? Um, so for me, it was a very structured way. I knew what I wanted from first year. So there's two things you need for FANG. One is getting the interview and the other is cracking it. And in my opinion, even though cracking it is hard, getting it is like 10 times harder because Literally, True. everyone's applying to those companies. So I think for me, uh, I had two things to do. As far as getting it was concerned, I needed to make a resume that made me like completely stand out. So I would do very random stuff, especially when I moved to the US. My resume was a blank sheet of paper. And a lot of my friends had done internships in high school because they do that here. So I was very, you know, oh. very behind. So I would just go to random stores like uh -huh. computer repair shops and be like, just hire me for free. I just want something for my resume. And then... <laughs> I went to my professors, I became a teaching assistant, a tutor, I started researching, and then I started getting like small part-time offers. And then I got an internship at Fannie Mae. And then at my internship, I did like, I went out of my way, I did a lot of extra stuff, which made me like recognized by the senior vice president. And he had stuff on my LinkedIn. Oh. So all of that helped me get a Vang interview per se. And as far as Great. cracking it goes, oh, thanks. <laughs> as far as cracking it goes, there's only so many topics, right? 
there's only so many data structures and algorithm questions. It's very limited. You just have to take it topic by topic and like master every single topic and then you'll be good. So I split it into like a 12 month uh, scenario. Like first month I'll focus on let's say arrays and strings. Next I'll focus on graphs only. And I'll do those questions thoroughly. So that was like my quote unquote one year plan. And that's what I followed. I wrote okay. a blog about it if you want to read deeply, but basically just uh, split it into sections and then knock down each section. And once you're done, you'll be able to crack interviews easily. Sure. So I'll mention the link in the description. All the people you're watching, just go through that to get a you know detailed touch of how preparation schedule. Okay, so like which platform you actually use to practice for DSA problems? Honestly, the platform doesn't matter. Um, so in my second year, uh, I was a part of Facebook's ABCS program, which is above and beyond CS, where they just help you practice DSA. So okay. that for that, they were using HackerRank. So I was just using HackerRank. And then I switched to lead code. I also do like GFG. I think it's just, I just Google like random questions that are interesting, or I go over Glassdoor and see the questions that were asked previously. And then whatever platform pops up, I use it. Okay, I see. But majorly okay. it's lead code, GFG and HackerRank. Uh, you know, briefly generalize the hiring process that you have in the US. So like in India, what you have is it starts from, you know, once the student applies to a company, he gets a test link. Uh, for most of the company, the process starts with the online test and then followed by a couple of uh, technical interviews, then followed by a HR discussion and then the offer. So how it goes in the US. Very similar. Uh, you get a hacker rank link. You just have to pass all test cases. Then you get a call from HR, which is a behavioral round. And then there's two to six, seven technical rounds, depending oh. on the company. Um, and then they just end it with another like discussion with the hiring manager, like you said. And mostly like the last few rounds are on campus. Pre-COVID, obviously, which is really nice. You get most of the companies are in the Silicon Valley, so you just get to fly there. So that's yeah, fun. <laughs> yeah, true, true, very true. Oh, okay. So, like in India, what I have seen recently is that you know, in technical interviews, even interns as well as the freshers are being asked senior, uh, senior engineer level questions, like system design questions. So, is there you know, have you faced such kind of thing? Yeah. Uh, again, it depends on the company, but especially when it comes to Fang, they do have one round of system design. If I was applying as a first or second year student, they didn't have it. But I think third year and especially fourth year, they had like uh, dedicated system design rounds. And I think I just went over a couple YouTube playlists for that. But honestly, if you've done like projects in your school or like on side projects, you won't have a hard time with system design because it's at the end of the day, it's just explaining how you uh, how you would solve a certain problem. You know, internship after the third year and getting placement after the fourth, uh, final year. It's a scenario and students mostly don't go for internship after their first year or the second year. So uh, like there in the US, like students are more interested to go in for internships after the you know completion of each and every year. Or what's the scene there? That was me. Uh, and honestly, what okay. you said in India, the scenario is after third year, that's your belief. Nobody's gonna kick you out if you're a first year student. There are companies who will have uh, restrictions that, okay, third year students only, and that's fine. But there are also companies out there that have, maybe they have special programs for first or second year kids, or there are companies who just, you know, let it go. So for me, I started interning in my first year itself in the US, and my first company was Fannie Mae, and I was one of the two or three interns who were not in third year. So I think it's oh. just a little belief we have, but if you just, you know, if you go to the interview and if they don't just filter you out because you are a th not a third year student, then it only comes down to you cracking the interview. And if you crack it, you'll get it. Very so true. that's yeah, just very true. what you mm -hmm. here. And another thing I wanted to mention was these special programs that I was talking about. I wasn't aware of them and I really regret not knowing, but Google has mm -hmm. a special program for, for second year students. Facebook has Facebook University. Yeah. Microsoft also has one. Yeah. Uh, Amazon has one, I think. Yes. So the four companies, they have like special programs. And honestly, it's so much yeah. easier to do these companies in the first, second year because the competition is so low. Almost nobody your age is interested in internship. <laughs> and once you get in, you can constantly like get return offers. And then even the fact that you have those companies in your resume will make it so much easier for you to get like jobs or internships again. In India, what we have is we prefer to have a job in... Uh, fan companies or big tech companies rather to work in a startup. So what do you think? What's the scenario there? Like students are more interested in, you know, building their own startup or working for startups or like Fang is the only, you know, I think here it's, it just boils down to your own passions. What do you want to do? 
obviously there's a huge fan following but there's also so many people who just you know they care about the role they care about the team and uh i just think that it it depends on your personal choice there's nothing wrong in wanting fan of course the company perks are insane and also like starting a startup major respect to you if you did that or if you are going to do that. <laughs> but i just think you shouldn't let uh, others opinions cloud your judgment just do whatever you want because at the end of the day it's your job you're going to have to live with it so you have done projects in your uh, you know your bachelor's and bsa also how do you actually bal- you know maintain a balance between the two uh, i had a fixed goal with bsa in the sense that spend an hour every day or 2 hours or 5 hours depending on what my schedule looked like or uh, how much work i had and then the rest of the time i would dedicate to projects one really good thing about us colleges is your coursework is practically just project after project after project every course i get 6 to 10 projects to do and if i uh, fail like there's a good faith attempt so if i fail if i fail a single test in a single project i'll fail the course and if i fail like two oh. courses i'll be out of college so just to you know oh. stay in college you have to do so many projects that it's just it comes very naturally to you and another mm-hmm. thing that i did to ensure i was doing projects was always have a part time job or always have never spend a summer without an internship per se and then in those internships mm-hmm. i would make a point to finish my project as early as possible like my facebook project mm-hmm. i finished 3 weeks early and then i had so much time to do whatever i wanted to do and all, yeah. everything is in front of me right so i just told my manager i'm really interested in instagram as a platform because i use it so much so i want to build a feature on instagram or something and i just need approval right so i just think mm-hmm. if you get in a company finish your pro- project as soon as possible and then do uh, a lot of sub projects and th- that'll look really good on your resume and as far as uh, side so, personal mm-hmm. projects concerned uh, like i said dedicate like a few hours to dsa or competitive programming if that's what you do and then do the rest spend the rest of the time on projects i think this sounds so interesting we don't have such kind of culture over here in india and yeah. uh, I, re- i really feel it should it should be there but no worries yeah. and so what happens in india is like we have a concept of tier 1 colleges tier 2 colleges and tier 3 colleges where tier 1 colleges are the you know premium institutes institutes of the country like iits or nits and uh, bits are also included and major big tech companies visit there to hire people so is there any such kind of thing there in the us um so again there is this concept of college ranking and my university is pretty high as far as cs ranking is concerned it's in the top 10 but that didn't make any difference because there's no campus placements and again the ivy leagues are just so much more prestigious so i guess it yes it didn't matter you apply online at the end of the day nothing matters yeah. you're a part of nirma university in ahmedabad so how you actually got an admission over there i mean what was the procedure if any exam that you have given for that um it's pretty standard the same exams you give uh, for your bachelor's uh, if you come in first year so in us uh, jumping from college to college is possible in india there is this concept after you're in a college you stay there i think but here yeah. you can just jump i know yeah actually there is a thing of literal uh, literal admission kind of stuff so it's there but not in every college yeah okay so here you can join a college whenever you can graduate whenever with however, however many degrees you want uh, i gave the standard oh. sat act toefl uh, all those exams they they're not bad especially if you're given the j it's very easy but uh, the yeah. harder part like writing a really solid essay you just don't know what they expect right it's an essay but your yeah. essay is <laughs> the factor and uh, stellar recommendation letters and then uh, for transfer admission it's harder in the sense that the acceptance rate is lower for university of maryland uh, the transfer acceptance rate was 5% which is super low oh. but i got it yeah. uh, i didn't know what to expect like i could have just not gotten it i don't know how or why <laughs> but okay. i got it so i stayed and um even though i was technically in my second year i had to start from the first course because like i said the cs at umb uh-huh. is like strategic uh-huh. and they don't allow any external courses so they took they took into a consideration my nirma courses but they didn't take the cs course into consideration so i had to start from scratch but at the same time okay. they allow taking extra courses or taking summer winter classes and everything so i just i used to pile up courses and i graduated in 3 years there are people who graduate oh. in uh four years five years and they have like two three four degrees so it's super flexible if that makes sense <laughs> wow that is good to know have you asked for referrals over linkedin or any other platform uh, to to get a interview call and what are your like do you have any prior experience with it so uh the first time i got into fang i didn't have referrals because i was again i was naive i wasn't yeah. i didn't have any connections at all like i didn't know anyone in fang um so i would just apply online but i applied you know again and again and again 
and uh, different roles. So if I hear back once, I have a recruiter email and then that's like hitting the jackpot. So uh, that's what I did. But the next year onwards after Facebook, I, I, I started being really active on my LinkedIn and I started making connections actively. And the fact that referrals give you an edge is like real. Like there's a huge, yeah. huge advantage to you if you get a referral. So what I did after that was I would reach out to random people on LinkedIn and uh, just, you know, refer me. And if I had to give you like a, a couple of tips, it would be one, don't reach out to someone who is a YouTuber or a blogger or someone who's like a public figure per se with a lot of connections because they get a lot of referral requests. So instead I would personally target a person who is active on LinkedIn, but they don't have like a gazillion connections. So, I can, so they will read my message and they might give me a chance. And another thing I do is like, give, it, give them an opening because you are asking a complete stranger, right? So I would just be like, hey, uh, this is the role. This is my resume. Give them all the info upfront. And then be like, uh, it would be great if you could refer me, but if you can't, I totally understand. So that way you don't make it awkward mm-hmm. for them to say no. If they slow, say no, just take yeah. it like a sport and go to the next person. So that's sure. how I did it. And I got referrals everywhere right. after Facebook. Mm-hmm. And it was not hard. You okay. just have to reach out to a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, true. Very true. Okay. So uh, any particular resume tips that you want to share and you believe that you had in your resume and that made it stand out from others? Um, so for resume, I think the general idea is everywhere on the internet, you know, but I think instead of just looking at resume format tips and all of that, look at resumes of people who got in. Um, if you go yeah. through that, you will notice that most of it is like, it's very clean. Uh, it's very clear. You can see like it's bulleted or like you can see clearly. And mm-hmm. at the end of the day, there's no magic format. It's the content that gets you in companies. So instead <laughs> of like focusing yeah. on, oh, should my resume look like that or that? Just focus on the content, try to build more projects, content. try to get more experience, all of that. And I wrote another blog, uh, which is just, I just asked my friends who were in bank to just give me the resume and I'll just put them out. So in, like I said, instead of going through like format, just look at examples of people who succeeded. So lastly, any tips that you want to share with the students who aspire to get into, you know, big tech companies? It's never too early. And the earlier you start, the easier uh-huh. it is to get in. So just start in your first year, literally start applying. There's a huge possibility that the thing is, once you apply, your name goes into the database. And then once you apply again and again, yeah. you kind of pop up. I think that's what happened to me. Like I just suddenly heard back by applying online, which I didn't think was possible. So just start early and start doing a lot of part-time work. Uh, there is no work that's beneath you. It could be yeah. very, like, you know, it could be a role that's very easy or something that you're not interested in at first. And I also hear a lot of debate about, you know, unpaid internships are not fair and all of that. But if you ask me personally, and again, this might be like super conflicting. A lot of people don't agree with me, but I would gladly take a, a job for free because it's very hard to get a good internship with a blank resume. So just exactly. take whatever you just take whatever you get and start early is my advice. True. Great, great. I mean, uh, session had so much to learn for me as well. And th- those pro tips, like, uh, you know, apply, you're asking for referrals on LinkedIn and the second thing, you know, applying again and again just to get into their database and get a pop up uh, somewhere down the line. So they were really amazing. And I hope the students who will watch this video, uh, who are watching this video, will definitely you know, learn something out of it and uh, do follow these tips. And I mentioned all the links and the resources in the description below. You can connect with Anjali over LinkedIn. I mentioned her LinkedIn ID as well. Thank you, Anjali, for your time. It was great talking to you. Glad to connect with you and uh, all the best for your journey ahead. Thank you so much.